Okay, so the title of this video is Lest Any Man Should Boast and it comes from, the phrase comes from the Bible verse in Ephesians 2.9 where it says, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the whole passage is Ephesians 2.8.9 where it says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So over there the Bible teaches that salvation is by grace and is through faith and grace is something that is by definition unmerited. It's an unmerited act of kindness. In this case it's, it's salvation. Salvation is by grace through faith. It means that we don't earn it, we don't keep it by our, by our works, we don't persevere to the end in order to get it or to make sure that we have it. No, we just receive it through faith. By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It says it's not of ourselves, it's nothing to do with what we did. It's not, it doesn't come from us. It comes from God. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But then at the end, it says there, it says there that it is the gift of God, uh, lest any man should boast. So the Bible teaches that salvation is by grace through faith, that it's a gift of God so that no one can say that they are going to heaven because of what they did, because of their merits. Uh, it's a gift because it's all God's merit. God will not share his glory with any other. And he, he gets all the glory for salvation and it's very important because he did all the work for it. He paid for it with his blood, with his suffering, with his death, with the nails in his hands and and naturally he, he gets all the glory for that. He's the one who saves us. And there are many people who don't believe that today. And there are many people who say you need to do X, Y, and Z in order to be saved. Or if you don't do X, Y, and Z, then you're losing your salvation. Or another twist is when they say if you don't do X, Y, and Z, then you're proving that you were never saved to begin with. But it's the same thing, like all of that is just the same thing because you have to do X, Y, and Z in order to go to heaven. And in Catholicism you do X, Y, and Z to be saved. In Arminianism you do X, Y, and Z so that you don't lose your salvation. And in Calvinism you do X, Y, and Z to prove your salvation. And in all three systems you do X, Y, and Z in order to go to heaven, in order to be saved and you're not realizing that you have to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to rely on what he did for you in order to go to heaven, not what you do for him. And what I'm reminded of when I hear this phrase, lest any man should boast, I'm, reminding, I'm reminded of all those people who, who boast about their salvation or people who think they're going to heaven based on their wonderful works, based on how well they live. Every single uh, person who, who trusts in their works for, for salvation, they, they believe that they have to do something to, to either maintain it or persevere to the end or whatever. They believe they have to make some effort in order to go to heaven. They're going to tell you that salvation is by faith alone in many cases, but they don't believe that because they, they believe they have to live a certain way. When the Bible says, to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of, of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And so right there in verse 5 of of Romans 4 it says to him that worketh not but to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness and this means that the person who worketh not before salvation worketh not during salvation and worketh not after salvation but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly which is Jesus Christ his faith is counted for righteousness that person's faith is counted for righteousness they are going to heaven and they're not going there based on how they live or the amount of works they do. They're going there based on the, Lord, on the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ which is imputed onto them the moment they believe. Uh, Jesus' righteousness is all you need to go to heaven and your faith is counted for righteousness. Uh, 
the moment you believe. The Bible says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Our faith, believing God, is what counts for our righteousness. We're not going to heaven based on our goodness. And that's where, and that's where people in Matthew 7, 22 to 23 were mixed up. They thought they were going to heaven based on their works. Because it says in Matthew 7, 22 to 23, it says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So it's very clear that there's going to be a bunch of people one day expecting to be allowed into God's dwelling place, expect, expecting to be allowed into heaven, but Jesus will say to them, Depart from me, I never knew you, uh, ye that work iniquity. And the reason that Jesus is going to tell them that is because they are clearly trusting in their works. And they say, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. When the Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. They say, and in thy name done many wonderful works. When the Bible says to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. They say, and in thy name done many wonderful works, when the Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So what's coming out of their mouths there is proof of what they believe in their heart. Because the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, I don't have it memorized, but it says, says something along the lines of, out of, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what you speak shows what's in your heart. That's why when we go out soul winning, we ask people, if you die today, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? And then what they believe about salvation is going to come straight out of their mouth. They're going to tell you, they're, they're either going to tell you no or yes, or I hope so, I'm trying. And so these people clearly are trusting in their works to take them to heaven and they haven't done the will of the Father, which is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in, in the context of salvation. Because it says in John 6.40, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. So they didn't do the will of the Father. They didn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They trusted in themselves that they were righteous. And there is an interesting thing that Jesus says to them. Uh, he says, I never knew you. So he never knew them. That means there was no point in time where it could be said of them that Jesus knew them. He didn't know them at any time. And when you compare that with John chapter 10, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them. So Jesus knows his sheep. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So Jesus knows his sheep. He, kno he knows who they are. And he knows them. And it's clear that since he said to, to the people in Matthew 7, 23, he said to them, I never knew you. This, this means that those people were never his sheep. And the interesting thing about this is that people teach you can lose your salvation or you can fall away by not persevering to the end. And and not be saved anymore. People people who teach that they don't really believe that they are Jesus' sheep. Because if they believed that they were Jesus' sheep, then they would know that there is no way that he's ever gonna say to them, Depart from me, I never knew you, because Jesus knows his sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. So if you believe that there is any point in the future where, where Jesus is gonna be able to say to you, Depart from me, I never knew you, if you believe that's possible then you don't believe that you are his sheep. You don't believe you are saved. You are an unbeliever. You need to get saved. Jesus says, I know them. Jesus never is never going to say to me, depart from me, I never knew you, because he knows me, because I am one of, one of his sheep. So I just wanted to show you that in John chapter 10. It's, it's interesting. And another thing that comes to my mind 
regarding Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 9, where it says that any man should boast, is the, the account in Luke 18 about the, the publican and the Pharisee. It says in verse 9 of Luke 18, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now, isn't that the problem today? There is nothing new under the sun. Just like back then, people trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Even so today, you get many heretics, you get many false prophets teaching work salvation. Uh, you get Paul Washer who says, if you're carnal, you're not saved. Uh, you get Ray Comfort who says, you have to stop sinning to be saved. And so you get many people today who trust in themselves that they are righteous and despise others. But Jesus says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that, that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So right there, we have it. We see that people who think, who trust in themselves, people who trust in their own righteousness are not saved, and people who realize that they are sinners, people who realize that they have wronged God, and people who ask God for, for mercy, we saw that not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And the publican says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He realized the need for, for God's mercy. And Jesus says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. So that guy got saved. The other didn't because he, he asked God for salvation. And the interesting thing is that there is this heretic and false prophet out there, Martin Richling. I'm going to be making videos about him, uh, more videos about him soon. But he says that if you ask Jesus for salvation, if you ask God for salvation, then that is work salvation. And he says that calling upon the name of the Lord is work salvation. He says that and Gentiles don't, don't get born again in the New Testament. He says many, many different heresies coming from that man's mouth but uh, I wonder what he, what he would say about this because right here it's clear that the publican says God be merciful to me a sinner that's a prayer he is asking God for mercy God be merciful to me a sinner and he went down to his house justified how did how do you explain that if asking God for mercy is works then did that man go, get saved by works also? It, it just doesn't make any sense. And notice that it says that this man went down to his house justified. And it's interesting to compare where it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Uh, it says in Galatians that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So clearly, this guy being justified, that's, that's him being saved. He, he went down to his house saved. And so yeah, that, that would be the end, the end of the video. I just wanted to show there that verse in, that phrase in verse 9 of Ephesians 2. Lest any man should boast. It's clear throughout the Bible, salvation is by grace, through faith, nothing to do with how we live, nothing to do with our works. Of course, the Bible is very clear that if a believer were to, because it's very clear in the Bible that a believer has eternal life, they're going to live forever. Their faith is counted for righteousness. When they, when they appear before God, they're not going to appear before him clothed in their righteousness, which is filthy rags. They're going to be clothed in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, which they, which which was imputed unto them the moment they believed, 
and they have eternal life. They're going to live forever. Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, a believer in Christ will never perish. They will never die. Jesus said, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this. But the Bible is very clear that if a believer in Christ were to choose to disobey God and to live a lifestyle of sin, then that that believer would be disciplined by God on this earth and they, they would be chastened by, by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says in, in Hebrews 12, the Bible teaches that God scourges, uh, that he scourges and chastens every son whom he receives, whom he receives. And Jesus says in, in Revelation 3.19, he says that, uh, he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. So since we are Je Jesus' children, he will discipline us, he will chasten us when we go off the path, when we commit sin, because God loves his children, and chastening and discipline is a, is a sign that you are indeed a child of God. The Bible says, for ye are all the children of God by faith. In Christ Jesus so I just wanted to to make a point that because many people believe that well eternal security cannot be true because this means that you could just go out and sin and do all you want and and rob banks and kill kill people be a mass murderer and it wouldn't matter how you live at all well well it does matter the way you live but it doesn't affect whether you are saved or not. It affects your fellowship with the Father. It affects your fellow fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible is clear that, that God will chasten you. He will discipline you when you go off the path. And yeah, so it does matter how you live, but it doesn't affect whether you're saved or not.